I have a few new and updated iPhone apps I want to cover. This video is sponsored by Anchor. Let's get into it. First up is an app called Feed, but that's Feed with four E's, so Feed. This app aims to take all of your timelines, newsletters, blogs, YouTube channels, subreddits, Mastodon accounts, and more that you follow and to put them into one place. You can even add photos, reminders, and other stuff to show up in this feed as well. Once you get everything set up, the home tab will show you all of the accounts you have set up in the feed. By default, it won't show you anything you haven't added yourself, which I love. Feed does have the ability to suggest sources to follow if you want. The home tab will show you a mixture of different content. If a source is particularly active in a couple of days, it'll group a few items together. You can edit the tab bar at the bottom so you have access to specific sources quickly. You can also change the feed ranking. By default, it'll show a variety of different options, but you can switch it to a chronological timeline. Normally, I prefer a chronological timeline, but Feed does a great job at showing a variety of different things. So this way, I'm not seeing like duplicates of Apple news. I'm seeing a huge variety of different things that happened that day. I really like Feed with four E's. It's a really great app, especially when I have had a really busy day. Like, Today, I honestly, I haven't been able to look at news, Mastodon, threads, RSS, whatever. I haven't been able to look at any of that stuff today. Uh, so at the end of my day today, I'll probably just sit down, open up feed, and look at a variety of different things. So I'll check out the mechanical keyboard subreddit, or what's going on with Formula One, or what's happened with uh, Apple, or technology in general, or video games, or something like that. It's just a great way of me kind of creating a curated news app just for my interests. Text Workflow is a killer app if you get annoyed writing regular expressions. This is an app I just found out about and I immediately fell in love with it. This allows you to paste a bunch of text into it and change how it's formatted. There's simple one-off actions for styling text like strip HTML, replace text, remove line numbers, breaks, or even duplicates. But then there are workflows for batching actions together. You can turn a bunch of text into a list or pull all the links out of a block of text so just the links are left over. Or you could do the opposite and remove all the links from a block of text. It has a bunch of built-in workflows that make it super easy to get started. But you can of course build your own custom workflows as well. I took one that my pal John Voorhees made and modified it to help me format my YouTube descriptions a little bit better. Text Workflow even has shortcut support, so this means you can automate formatting text. Whether you're stripping markdown or changing the styling of the text, you can pipe it through shortcuts and just get an output. You can use this to turn a bunch of text into a task list for whatever task manager you use. There are just a ton of things that are possible here. The app is available not just on the iPhone, but the iPad and the Mac as well. And if you do a lot with text, you just need to go check out this app. This is one of those apps that will just end up saving you a ton of time if you are the kind of person that like has to format text for your job or school or notes you take or whatever this could end up saving you a ton of time this video is sponsored by anchor this is the anchor flex stand magnetic phone case this has full military grade protection for fall and drops it features a protective edge and four corner anti-collision air pad all without adding extra thickness to your iPhone. In fact, the frame of the case is only a half a millimeter thick. The whole case itself only adds three meters of thickness and weighs less than 50 grams. The case also has a built-in 360 degree ring stand. The ring itself rotates so you can stand your phone up in both portrait and landscape orientation. It also makes a very satisfying clicking sound when you rotate it. The stand itself is adjustable, so you can set your iPhone at the perfect angle. I love this feature about the Anchor Flex Stand case. I was doing some dishes the other day, and I just popped it up so I can continue watching a video on my iPhone while I was doing the dishes. It's also great if you pair a controller with your iPhone to play games. And if you're somebody that likes to have your task list next to you while you work, having a built-in stand on your phone makes this really easy to do, and it doesn't take up extra space on your computer to have your task manager open. 
The Anger Flex Stand of course works with MagSafe. And with the metal ring on the back side, MagSafe has a 40% stronger hold on your phone. So whether you're using MagSafe for charging, mounting your phone on a tripod for filming or taking photos, or just using standby mode, you know your phone's not gonna fall off. I also have here the Anchor Easy Fit Screen Protector Kit. I was shocked how easy this was to apply to my phone. There is a whole built-in system with the packaging for making it not only lined up properly, but is dust and air bubble free. This has shatterproof glass and can withstand approximately 44 pounds of pressure. It's also only a quarter of a millimeter thick and I didn't notice any screen quality difference at all. I'm gonna put links to where you can check out both these products in the description below. My thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. Simple Scan is, well, a scanner app. It's made by the developer that makes drafts. It's a simple scanning utility, but it does a lot more than the built-in iOS scanning utility. First, you can select the format of whatever you want the scan to be. So this could be PDF, image, or just text. If you do pick PDF by default, it will OCR whatever document you are scanning, whatever page you are scanning, it will OCR that text, meaning it will be searchable. Once you have the format, you can pick the destination. By default, you can send stuff to a new email or a message right after scanning, or you can save this document right to photos or files, or you can just send it via the share sheet. When you're ready, just hit scan document. It'll automatically detect the document. Afterwards, you can adjust the image so you can, you're can getting the proper corners if it just messes up a little bit. You can also add pages or retake scans if need be. But my favorite feature of the app is you can go into settings and set up custom destinations. I have a folder I save all of my business receipts to. So if I put gas in my car for a work trip or buy something at my camera store, I can just quickly scan the receipt and save it to that folder. Then at the end of the year, I can share that folder with my accountant and I don't have to worry about, okay, tracking down all these little individual receipts. So with Simple Scan, I can just select this folder as the destination and whatever I scan will just go right to that folder. I don't have to worry about moving it later or making sure it goes into files or whatever. By now, everyone's probably heard of the emulator app Delta. It's incredibly good. And there are some really interesting features that a lot of people actually don't know that are a part of Delta. So I just wanted to quickly highlight a couple of things. In settings of the app, you can actually go in and set up the ability to sync saves. This is going to be incredibly important very soon as the iPad version of Delta just got finished and it's kind of just waiting for App Store approval. Delta also has support for controllers. So I have the Backbone controller for the iPhone and it works perfectly with Delta. The Backbone controller supports pass-through charging, so if my iPhone is almost dead, I can plug in a USB-C cable to the controller and it charges my iPhone while I'm playing a game. It's incredibly responsive, really good controller. Now, there are a couple of other emulator apps I wanna highlight as well. Uh, RetroArch is another emulator app. It has support for playing a ton of various gaming consoles. Like you can just go look at the App Store page and see the list of everything it supports right out of the box. But it's a bit more fiddly than something like Delta. It's, it's not even a great iOS application. Like if you need to use the keyboard, it uses its own weird, like it doesn't use the system keyboard. It brings up its own keyboard in the app. It's kind of funky but it has support for more consoles than any other emulator I found on the App Store, including PlayStation and PSP, pretty cool. It also has support for things like controllers, autosave when closing, frame rate controls, syncs with retro achievements, and a lot more. If you feel comfortable getting into the nitty gritty and you understand like what all the stuff in an emulator means, RetroArch is kind of the perfect app for you because there is a ton of controls you can have. Yes, it's not a great native iOS app, but if you're looking for a ton of controls over the emulation app, this is a great place to start. Personally, I, I'm just gonna stick with Delta for most of my needs. Uh, you know, most of the stuff that I have been playing is either Game Boy stuff or Nintendo 64. But another emulation app that I've been playing with is PPSSPP. Bet you can't figure out what this emulates. It's PSP games. Uh, it works really well. It's just for PSP games. Uh, if you have those, 
great to sit around and play. It also has controller support and things like that. Um, it's not as native and nice as Delta, but it's much easier to use than something like Retro Arc. And the last emulator I want to talk about is Arc Emulator. Uh, this is just for Game Boy games, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. It runs on the iPhone, iPad, and Apple Watch. Totally works on the Apple Watch. I did it for the demo. I don't think I would ever play a game on there. Like it just doesn't feel comfortable, but it's totally possible. I've really been enjoying revisiting some older games that I haven't got to play in a really long time, uh, especially like Game Boy games and stuff like that. Now, what I'm gonna say before everyone jumps at me in the comments, all the games that I am emulating, I own. I have a copy of them. There are ways to rip your games and run them completely legally. It's really easy to go find out. You can go search for that stuff. Uh, this is the route I went. I'm not your mother. I'm not gonna tell you how to go about it, but that's the way I went about it. Now, speaking of games, I wanna highlight an app called Ketchup by Ben McCarthy, a developer that makes uh, the camera app Obscura. Really great app, especially if you're revisiting classic Pokemon games. Now, what this is, is it's a full-on Pokedex right on your iPhone. Everything you need to know about Pokemon is right in here. It has all the Pokemon, over, all over a thousand of them, however many we're up to. It has support for uh, type matchups, moves a Pokemon can learn, evolution triggers, stats, more. It literally has everything that you could possibly need to know while playing a Pokemon game. Uh, that's even like more in depth than the Pokedex app in the actual Pokemon game. Like this is everything you could possibly need to know. It does a great job at that. Ben did an excellent job with it. There is even a dedicated tab that will basically let you say like, hey, I'm going to use a fire type move. How will this work against a grass and rock type Pokemon. So those are the iPhone apps I've been playing with lately. I wanna hear from you all. What is like your current favorite iPhone app? Productivity, utility, game, doesn't matter. I just wanna hear about it. Let me know in the comments below. My thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.